very good morning to one and all. It's wonderful to be in the house of the Lord, to worshiping with one another. Amen? Amen? Shall we rise, church? Let us now worship Him. you 
thank you, Lord Jesus, for being so good, so good to us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for loving us, for granting us a victory in our lives because of what you have done on the cross. For what you have done on the cross for us, Lord. So we thank you, Lord, from the bottom of our hearts. And we worship you, Lord, now in spirit, Lord, and in truth. Thank you, Lord. set me free look at the wounds that give me life grace flowing from his side no greater sacrifice what is done all the glory and the honor to the sun forgiven my future is heaven I praise God for what is done sing for the freedom he has won even death is dead and done his life is overcome Say the name above all names Over every broken place He is risen from the grave Forget what is the Lord, oh Lord, I 
Indeed, we praise you, Lord, for all that you have done. Lord, for all that you have done for all of mankind, for our lives, Lord, we praise you, we honour you, we glorify you, we lift up your name. We praise you, O Lord, for you are the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings. You are our Saviour, you are our banner, you are our vanguard. You are our Lord, O Lord. And so, Lord, we indeed lift up your name and we praise you for who you are and for what you have done. Come, Lord, in our midst today. Help us, Lord, to receive of your word into our lives, your words of love, of life, of truth, so that, Lord, we may rejoice indeed at what you are doing even in our lives today. So we praise you and thank you indeed, O Lord. We lift up your name. Draw us into your presence. Draw us into your love. Draw us into your truth. In Jesus' name, and everyone says, Amen and amen indeed. Can you turn to the person next to you and say, God has done a great thing in your life. Amen. He has indeed done a great thing in all of our lives. Please be seated. Very good. Well done. <laughs> Praise God indeed. All right, so good morning, church. Good morning, church. Okay, very good. <laughs> Uh, we have come today to our final sermon of our sermon series on stewardship. Uh, we began by looking at how we ought to invest in heaven rather than on earth. Remember, all of you scored 10 upon 10 when Pastor Tsukui asked you those questions. Very good. And then we looked at how we can invest in faith because we are assured of God's love for us. Whether we give more or we give less, and He will, He will help us abound in every good work. So for those who cannot give as much this year, do not be disheartened. For those who can give more this year to help others, do so. In either case, we can be cheerful givers. And then last week, our lay leader, Kenneth, uh, reminded us that we have but one life. Let's make it count. And that is why we must. We must make our lives count and we must invest, in our, um, invest our talents. And a number of you, I must say, after his sermon, touched by him and by God, went forth to do just that at our ministry fair. I've been told that 39 of us actually signed up to serve in the various ministries. Thank God for all of you. Shall we encourage our brothers and sisters who actually, you know, committed their lives to serve the Lord and to serve the Lord's people. Praise God for that. And so, let's continue to do so to invest our talents in the Lord's work. Today, in our final sermon on stewardship, we are looking at how and why we ought to invest in others. Why we ought to invest in others. And the passage that I'm going to be basing my, the sermon on is taken from this very simple uh, Proverbs in Proverbs 11, verse 25. Shall we read it together as the people of God? Proverbs 11, 25. One, two, three. 
Whoever brings blessing will be enriched, and the one who waters will himself be watered. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God indeed. In 2003, almost 19 years ago now, so that's 19 years ago, just before my wife Jen and I got married, we decided that it would be good for us to have marriage mentors in our life. Uh, and so we approached our associate lay leader of the church uh, at that point in time. And so you all can approach your lay leaders of the church too. And we asked them, you know, are you all willing to be our mentors, our marriage mentors, he and his wife? And then they said, mm, not so sure yet. You're like, mm. And then they said, let's meet up and then we can decide. So I met, we met up with them and had a good dinner uh, at, a, at, a, at, at their house. And then they decided that they will mentor us. And then, you know, we have been meeting regularly since then. Uh, they are about 10 to 15 years in their life journey ahead of us. So we see their children grow up. And then we know what's going to happen to our children, the kind of things that they're going through and all that, right? And over the years, we have met up initially, uh, maybe a quart- once a quarter for about two to three years. And then I think they think, oh, this couple, I think quite stable. Lah. And so they decided, okay, meet a bit less, it's okay. And up to now, 19 years later, we are still meeting once a year, just to catch up, just to see how we are. From them, we have received marriage tips. We have received tips on how to bring up our kids, like how to send them to a naughty corner. We have observed them in action in terms of how they discipline their children, how they relate to one another, how they encourage their children, how they, how they pray together as a couple and as a family. And it has really been a blessing you know, to us, not just for Jen and I, but to our whole family, even to our children, because now our children, a bit older, get to interact with their children, uh, who one of them already married as well. They have also shared with us how, other than we being blessed, how they themselves, uh, mentoring us, have also been a blessing to them. They say that now, every year, they know that they will have to share with us how their marriage life is, how parenting has been for them in the past year, and then they have to share it with the pastor and the wife. And so they say, oh, he has kept them on their toes as well. And so he has also blessed them. The one who blesses is also enriched. The one who waters is also watered. And that's our scripture text today. And so we will be looking at our scripture text and our sermon today through five words. Through five words. And the words are, why, how, why, who, how. Why, how, why, who, how. Actually, three words, lah, but two of them repeated. So, can you say it together, me? One, two, three. Why, how, why, who, how. Okay, very good. Why, how, why, who, how. And we'll be asking these questions. Why? Why should we invest in others? How? How do we get enriched ourselves? Why then do we invest? Why, why don't we invest in others? Why do we, or oh, how, who do we invest in? And how do we invest in others? Why, how, why, who, how? Okay, so firstly, why? Why should we invest in others? Why should we bless others? Well, simply put, our scripture text tells us that when we do so, we ourselves will be enriched. We ourselves will be watered. It's quite strange, right, that the verse says watered. It's like, huh? What has watering got to do with uh, blessing and enriching, right? In fact, the original Hebrew word for water, it's quite an interesting word that scholars have translated in various ways over the years. In fact, I actually asked our OT scholar, Daniel. Daniel is somewhere here today. He's he's studying for his PhD in Hebrew studies, so I know I can ask him. And he was telling me, yeah, this verse uh, is is, is contested Uh, amongst various scholars. And the specific meaning of this word is quite difficult to pin down. And so we see in the ESV version that we just read, and it says, whoever brings blessings will be enriched, and one who waters will himself be watered. But the New Living Translation translates as, the generous prosper, those who refresh others will themselves be refreshed, watered, refreshed. And the message translates as, the one who blesses others is abundantly blessed. Those who help others are helped watered, refreshed, helped. It's almost as if scholars cannot pin down, you know, what exactly the word should they use to translate this word. And I think that's perhaps could be the intent of the original author, 
to pick a word that cannot be easily pinned down so that it can mean different things. It can mean different ways in which a person can be blessed if the person goes forth to be a blessing for others. The one who blesses, the one who invests, will himself be watered, will himself be refreshed, will himself be helped. How though, how do we get watered? How are we enriched? How are we refreshed and helped when we invest in others? Well, amongst other things, I believe that as we begin to think of others and try to help others, some things begin to happen to us in our lives, in our hearts. Firstly, our hearts will be fuller because we begin to feel for others. We begin to fill our hearts with other things other than our own concerns, you know, our own desires, our own wants. Other things begin to fill our hearts and our hearts begin to feel fuller. Our problems will be dimmer because we begin to see not just our own struggles, but the struggles of others as well. And then we begin to see, actually, mine, not too bad. Lah. Huh? Our perspectives will be wider because we begin to see all that's happening around us and, and we're not so fixated about our own lives and our own world all the time. Our perspectives will be wider. Our hopes will be stronger because we, see, we begin to see that lives can be changed for the better. We begin to see that the reality of God working in our midst, in the lives of people being so real and so tangible. And so our trust in God becomes deepened because we see Him so real and doing His work. And uh, that's our hopes. And then our trust will be deeper because we begin to see God working. We begin to see how He's involved in all that we do and our trust in Him is deeper. Our hopes are stronger because we see things getting better in the lives of people. And we become more Christ-like because we've begun now to emulate Christ, to be like Christ. Christ who Himself gave of His life for others. And now as we partake of the same work, as we go and give of our own lives for others, we are becoming more Christ-like in all that He has done in His own life. And so we do get blessed when we bless others. Maybe not in the ways we imagine, but we do get watered ourselves when we water others. So why? Having all these benefits, why don't we sometimes invest in others? And I think there could be some reasons for that amongst others. Firstly, some of us may fear that we will have less time for ourselves. You know, if you give all our time for others, wow, then my me time how, my recreation time how, I need time to refresh myself, you know. I think the solution for many of us uh, may be that for the time that we have that has been given to us, we need to be actually be more intentional in how we manage our time. I remember a number of years ago, I used to be very fixated about reading football news. Especially when my football team wins, uh, wow, I'll be so excited, I'll be reading the news, all day, the football news all day long the next day. And when the opponent team loses, I'll be so excited, I'll be reading, wow, why they lost? I'll be laughing at them through football news. And I'll spend hours reading football news. It got so bad that I told my accountability group, guys, hey, I think you all must keep me accountable to at most reading three football articles you know, after every weekend. And then they said, you just pray for your football team that they lose all. Then you won't want to read the football news anymore, what? They're like, hmm, no matter, I just control myself. Three, <laughs> three football news will do. And then I found myself having controlled myself to spend this little time just reading the football news. I can spend myself, spend my time more productively in other ways. And I think likewise, isn't it, for our watching of Netflix movies, uh, maybe Korean dramas. You know, it's good to be able to have some me time to refresh ourselves. But truth be told, sometimes we get into it for so long that we actually don't feel refreshed. In fact, we feel tired out, isn't it? After a while. And so if we are able to be more intentional with the usage of our time, this is refreshing time, this is renewal time, this is me time, and we keep to that, we'll feel refreshed. And then we have other times to be able to minister to others, to be able to do, use our time more productively. So let's choose to be more intentional with our time since even time itself is a commodity that God has given us to steward. And we ought to steward time productively for others. 
Another fear may be that, you know, when we go out to invest in the lives of others, wow, the troubles they were con- confronted with become too heavy for us to bear. And we are fearful that, wow, of all these troubles, wow, I, don't, I don't even know how to help people. I become overwhelmed, you know. And that's sometimes our fear, that the troubles are too heavy for us to bear. I think that's a valid concern. And that is why in ministries like the outreach and social concerns that uh, Pastor Ming oversees, uh, we teach people that, uh, who are serving in these ministries to learn to establish good boundaries between themselves and those whom they are helping. For them to know that you know, there will always be people that they can turn to and talk to uh, when the problems get too big, that they can escalate the problems to, and to involve others in the caring as well if need be. So it's not all just on themselves. Do you remember when Jesus spoke of the parable of the Good Samaritan? Even the Good Samaritan didn't do everything by himself to help the poor guy. He got the innkeeper involved in the caring as well, right? So that he can still go about his own duties and his other uh, things that he, he needs to do. He involved others in the caring. So don't worry if you feel that, wow, if I go and help, uh, the troubles will be too great to bear. There are others in this family of Christ who can come in, carry the burden together with you, and together we help others to be able to see God in their lives. Another thought maybe that may come to our minds that discourages us from investing in others may be the thought, hmm, what if I pour out myself to them and then they reject me? Uh? What if I'm not appreciated? I think to that, we can remember that even in Jesus' own ministry, he was rejected. Even in Jesus' own ministry, he was pushed away. And he still gave of himself anyway. He still gave his life for others anyway. And so we can try as well. It's okay to be rejected. It's about us trying. And over time, prayerfully, they will accept our love for them. And Proverbs 11.25 tells us that whoever brings blessings will be enriched. The one who waters will himself be watered. We will be watered regardless. Maybe not by those whom we are helping if we're not appreciated by them. It's okay, but we will be watered. We will be enriched. And that's the promise of the text. God will in His time, in His way, enrich us in our lives. Why then do we, uh, who then do we invest in? So we've gone, why, how, why, now, who? Who then do we invest in? Who needs watering? Well, everyone around us needs watering, actually. If we look hard enough into one another's lives, we will see that all of us have needs. Some have needs financially. Some have needs emotionally. Some have needs physically. Some have needs spiritually. Charles Spurgeon, who once preached a sermon uh, on the very same scripture text as us today, and he entitled his sermon, The Waterer Watered. The Waterer Watered. And he said in his sermon that, you know, just like all plants, whether they're healthy or not healthy, all plants need watering, right? They need water to survive. All plants need watering. So everyone needs help. Everyone needs to be watered. Everyone has needs. If we look down deep into our own lives, we know we have needs. And likewise, our neighbour, likewise, our community around us, everyone has needs. We can water all around us. But also, let us also look out especially for those who are sick, for those who are vulnerable, for those who are marginalised, for those who are seeking, for those who are troubled. These are the ones who are not just in need of watering, they are in need of a lot of watering. They are almost withering. They need help. And so we ought to render them the extra help that they need. Let's look out especially for those who are vulnerable and marginalised. And there are perhaps quite a number of those in our community as well. And Today, when you go down into the ministry fair, there's ministry fair again today, you will see a number of ministries that desire to care for those who are truly vulnerable, who are truly in need. The Outreach and Social Concerns Ministries, they are the ones who will go out, look for people who are in need, and then will care for them 
in various ways, whether financially, emotionally, giving them a community. And so I'd like you to go down and to see how you can be a part of that work. And then finally, after who do we invest in? How? How do we invest in others? There are many different ways, but I can think of two very straightforward ways for us today. Firstly, is to serve. We can serve. We can begin by serving others, whether here in our midst, in our connect groups, in our ministry groups, look out for people who need to be served, look out for people who need to be cared for, to be watered. We can do so here in our midst, but we can also do so for the community around us, especially this year when we are on the theme of one more neighbour to love. We ought to be intentionally looking out for the community around us, those who need to be watered, to go and bless them, to go and care for them, to go and be uh, God's vessel of provision for them. Again, if you go down to the ministry fair today after the service, you'll see this, opportunities for us to serve one another and to serve the community. The extend huddle, I've said earlier already, goes out to serve the community, but the edify huddle, the other set of ministries that you see today, you know, aims to be able to encourage one another, build one another up in a word, uh, build one another up in, in, uh, in, in how we live life together. And that's how we edify one another in this church family. And that's why they are called the Edify Ministries, the Edify Huddle. So go down and see how we can serve one another and serve the community around us. That's how we can invest in the lives of others. But the other way is to give financially. To invest in others, in the lives of others, is to also be able to give financially to the ministry of the church. Later in the family news, you will hear of our finance chairperson, Kesan, who will come up to share about, how, about, the fi- about, about the finances of the church and how it's used for the various ministries of the church, including the outreach uh, and social concerns, including the missions, and how we use all these finances to change lives, to make an impact in the lives of people. Through our giving and pledging, we invest in the lives of others through the ministry of the church. And over the years, we have heard so many testimonies of people who have received this aid, who have received this help, and their lives have been changed for the better. Their lives have been changed uh, in, 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 in miraculous ways. And so giving financially really changes lives, really impacts lives. So how do we invest in others? You can begin today by going down to the ministry fair after the service and by pledging and giving financially to the church. In closing, I want to share a six-minute video that I once watched on YouTube that was produced by the Community Chess. You know, I actually wrote an email uh, to Community Chess uh, a few weeks ago to ask them for permission to show this video uh, for this sermon. And I was so impressed by them that they not only wrote back to say, yes, use it, but they even sent me another link so that I can download the original version of the video. Uh, For those who will be watching this recorded sermon, we will provide the link of the video in the comments below in the YouTube. But for those of us here, you get to watch the original version of the video today. It's It's the video called GIF. Let's watch it together. Being rich, it's not about how much you have, but how much you can give. Let us give of ourselves for others. And by, doing, by doing so, we will be enriched. We will be, we will be watered. Let us pray together. Father in heaven, we want to thank you for how you gave your best first for us. You gave your only son our Lord Jesus Christ. By His own giving of His life, Lord, we have received much, much, much from You. Help us, Lord, today to also give of ourselves of others, to others, so that, Lord, they may receive also from You through us. The love, the grace, and all that You have provided for us in our lives. So, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for the privilege of being able to give indeed. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Church, shall we rise?
And let us respond together with this song, Spirit Touch Your Church. As we go into a time of uh, prayer, may I invite all of us to pray alongside um, these items. Today, we're going to pray for our outreach uh, locally in Topayo as well as overseas. So as I lead us in prayer, may I encourage you to also lift up and offer your prayers unto the Lord. We're going to first pray for our uh, One More Neighbour to Love, our block blessing. Come, let's pray. Father, we want to thank you, Lord, that we have been able to connect with our neighbours in blocks 152, 153, 154 here in Topayo, God. Thank you, Lord, that you have put us here to be a good neighbour to them. And as we continue to connect with them, uh, with our block blessing that's coming up in August, Lord, we pray, Lord, for more opportunities to build friendship with our neighbours. Father, we pray that as we bless our neighbours with the gift that we will be bringing, it will create um, talking points for us a lot that as we go, we can um, build friendships with them. So, Lord, even as we have sung and we have asked you, Lord, touch our church, Lord. Spirit, touch your church. And we pray that, Lord, your spirit will go with our volunteers as they go out to meet the neighbours to these blocks, Lord. Father, your spirit go forth before us, oh Lord. And that, Lord, we will protect our volunteers, but just give them also the wisdom uh, to know how to connect with uh, the individuals, the households. Give them the love, O oh Lord, that will pour out and flow out and so that our neighbours will be able to know, oh Lord, that it is um, your love, O oh God. We also want to pray for um, the ministry in Bhutan. We are working with a minis- uh, missionaries there, a pastor there. 
Father Lord, we want to thank you, Lord, that the COVID measures are relaxed now in Bhutan. And so the churches and the house fellowships are able to gather in person, just like us, oh Lord, to worship, to fellowship, oh Father, and to build one another up. And Lord, we thank you for the reports that we are hearing of people coming to know you as the gospel is shared. We want to pray, a oh Lord, for Pastor Kamar Singh, uh, that, Lord, you will continue to use him in communicating your good news and bringing people to faith in Jesus, the Lord. Father, we pray for safety and protection for Kama and his team as they literally travel over mountains to remote parts in Bhutan to meet with the churches, to share a gospel in these communities, the Lord. May you use them to encourage and bring your truth into this community. So Father, we thank you that we can partner them in prayer and in giving as well. A lot we remember them uh, in our prayers. We uplift all these concerns to you a lot, Father, and we know a lot that you will be glorified. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for praying alongside with me. Um, and, you know, before we go into a time of exchange of peace, let me just share a little fun fact, okay? Do you know that after Jesus' resurrection, He said, peace be with you to His disciples three times? And, you know, because of Jesus' resurrection, He has defeated Satan and the power of sin. And, you know, when we, when we call Jesus our Lord and Savior, Satan has no control over our emotions and our thoughts. And, you know, maybe there may be some of us sitting here who may be feeling confused, um, depressed, um, worried. And when we go to one another and we say, peace be with you, we are actually saying to them, you know, the Lord's wholeness, the Lord's blessing, the Lord's assurance and comfort be with you. And we are also saying to one another, let us have harmony and peace between us as well. So knowing that, can I encourage us to just stand and let's exchange signs of peace with one another. And so really, the peace of Christ be with all of you. And no, we're here, we're gathered together again, praising the Lord. And you know, if it is the first time here in our church, we want to acknowledge your presence and to uh, give you a welcome gift. Okay, so um, we're going to ask you to just raise your hands and give us a wave so that we can uh, and, uh, acknowledge you and uh, yeah, just get to know you a bit more and give you a welcome pack, tote bag which you can see on the screen. So I'm going to start with these two sections on the floor as well as in the balcony. Um, yeah, are there in the gallery, are there anyone who is here for the first time? Uh, if you could just raise your hand so that we can just acknowledge you and, and give you a gift. Yes, we do have one. Thank you for raising your hand. Yeah, and welcome to our church. Uh, Ashes, if the, you can help, the, those around can help to continue to point and raise hands. Thank you very much. We're so glad that you have joined us. Any in the balcony that we may have missed out? Okay, I'm going to move to this side, uh, the left side of our sanctuary. Uh, anyone here, if you could just raise your hand. Yes, we do have a gentleman in green. Welcome to our church. Glad to see you. Glad you can join us. And for those around, if you, uh, our member, church worshippers, just help us to welcome them as well also and get to know them also. Anybody else that may have missed out? Okay, but well, we're glad to have uh, visitors here in our midst. And um, yeah, and we also get to have family and friends, brothers and sisters here together. And let's continue with uh, worship with a time of giving and giving of the Lord's tithes and our offerings. And you know, giving is also a way of us uh, how we worship God by showing our trust and our love towards Him. And let us give according to how God has enabled us to give. So there are various modes. I'm sure you are well aware already. You can give through the offering bags that will be coming by or we can do e-giving as well. Uh, so remember for pledges, put a P followed by your name in the reference section. If you are visiting uh, today, please do not feel obliged to give. But if you do wish to give, there is no amount that is too small. Okay, let me invite our faithful ushers to come forward as I pray on our behalf. Let's pray. Father God, we are making a decision today to want to invest in others and to bless others with whatever little or much that we give. 
multiply these gifts and give us the joy of seeing others blessed by it, that we too ourselves will be enriched. We pray in your Son's name. Amen. Okay, as the ushers are serving you. Now, if you're wondering how you can answer the question, why, how, why, who, how, right? And you want to apply the why, how, why, who, how, and the Family News has some opportunities for you to do just that. So first of all, please keep our pastors and our leaders in prayer uh, as they meet this Tuesday to discuss on church matters uh, on at 7.30. Okay, do keep them in prayer for wisdom, for bonus as, to, uh, as they make decisions about the church. It's tough times, yeah? Um, yeah, so we ask for God's help uh, with all these decisions also. The next one, we all have blood. So we can give blood. And this is one way. If you can stretch out your hand and pump your fist like that, you can give blood already. Yeah, and but don't worry, you know, there will be nurses there and the Red Cross, we partner with Red Cross uh, and they will be there to do health checks first um, before, you know, ascertaining whether you are able to give blood. So yeah, do come down. And if you notice that, we are trying to do uh, blood donation drives together with the Red Cross twice a year, once during uh, the Easter period and another time very near during our church anniversary. And this is one way that we as a church can work with the community and also bless the community. That's the why, how, why, who, how, right? So do sign up. The registration details are on screen either through the QR code or from the uh, link that you have there. Can, and, you know, just come down and test. And even if, let's say, your blood count is not enough, like for me, I, I can't because my blood count is not enough, but you know that they give free iron supplements? So <laughs> you can come and get free iron supplements. Okay? That is so anti of me. Yes. Um, but, you know, blood is so needed to save lives for, to sustain medical emergencies like leukemia, thalassemia, bleeding disorders, and other major surgeries. So your blood... Um, one unit of blood can save three lives. So do register. Another way you can do if you can't give blood, you know you can't, um, you know, share it on our social media posts, on your social media posts, so that your friends, your family members, your one more can also come and participate in this as well. Okay? The other news we have, copy time. We are resuming our copy time uh, every month on the fourth Sunday of each month. And this is a time for us to uh, get to know and meet all those who are new to our church or relatively new and you want to find out a little bit more uh, to meet the leaders, the pastors and the staff. So do join us if you are uh, new to our church. Come for Kopi Time next week after service at the Welcome Lounge and we would love to connect with you. All right, another one, ministry fair. Pastor talked about it. Last week, we had uh, some of the ministries, and then this week, uh, some more ministries. We, we structure and organize our ministries by huddles. You have heard that already. So it's happening after the service. Come and go to the booths, visit, connect, find out, ask questions, and, and pray, and see how, where God is leading you to serve uh, in this church. You know, our church is enriched also by you when you take part and you participate uh, in the ministries and serve in this ministries, okay? So we'll see you downstairs. Now, a little bit about pledge. I um, want to explain a little bit. So July is what we call our pledge month, um, and that is where we as a church, we support and we commit to support the church financially uh, for the new financial year that is beginning on the 1st of August. So we had a dedication of our commitment on the first Sunday of July, if you remember. But if you say, oh, I haven't given my pledge yet, and uh, there is still time, you can still submit your pledge. And it would be really helpful uh, for us uh, in our budgeting if you can submit your pledges by the 31st of July. Okay, So you can submit your pledges by filling a pledge card. Uh, and drop it into the pledge box. So the pledge box is here, and it's going to be here for the whole month. Just come by, drop your pledge cards inside the box. Um, if you need a pledge card, it's available at the foyer outside or downstairs at the information counter. You can ask for one. Or just contact the church office, and we'll be glad to uh, mail it to you. Or you can submit your pledge electronically also through the link and the QR code that you see on the screen. Okay, so let's prayerfully consider how we can give uh, and give unto the Lord. 
And so we also would, we have, like what Pastor says, we have our chairperson for our finance chairperson uh, from our local church executive committee, okay, Sun, here to present our budget for the upcoming financial year. And that's really for accountability to you as a church, but also for you to know how you can partner us uh, in the giving as well and where the resources are needed. So can I invite Kay Sun here to share with us? Hi, good morning, everyone. Hi. So uh, I'm Kay San, and uh, I'm the finance uh, chairperson for the church. I'm here to give you a brief account of the church finances, as well as to present to you uh, the church budget for the new financial year. Okay, this is um, the financial year ends on the 31st of July, and uh, this uh, for the financial year 2021-22. Uh, which will be closing in a month's time. We are forecasting a surplus of uh, 179,000. Uh, this is in contrast to the 195,000 uh, deficit that was budgeted uh, for the financial year. Uh, reasons for this are mainly due to the lesser expenditure uh, due to the COVID restrictions. The budget for the new financial year, year 2022-23, uh, that is uh, adopted by the LCC. And this, uh, we are forecasting a deficit of 333000 We trust that God will provide for all our needs and for the needs of His church. Uh, I will proceed to give you a breakdown of the budget. Uh, this is an overview of the expenditure for the financial year 22-23. Uh, as you can see, there's an increase in all areas. Uh, we are also planning for a church camp next year and I uh, hope uh, you are ex excited as uh, we are. <laughs> uh, this is the breakdown of the expenditure for the four harders. Okay, I shall go on to the extend harder. Um, the extend harder, well, first of all, we'd like to thank everybody for your contribution, uh, generously uh, contributing to the Jubilee Fund. Uh, through it, we were able to provide uh, support for church planting works in our mission fields, as well as to help more families. Uh, we have increased the budget for the next financial year in the Extend Harder as we plan to do more to spread God's love uh, in, through our community and uh, other nations. I encourage you to participate uh, in the various projects planned by these ministries, uh, for example, going for a mission trip next year. Uh, this is the budget for the Edify Harder. Uh, inside the Harder is uh, some important ministries relating to the discipleship of the congregation, uh, besides providing care, there will also be courses, seminars, and training programs and other activities planned for all of us. This is the budget for the Evangelize Harder. As we move towards uh, in-person service, expenditure do increase, and we seek to honour God and worship Him uh, with our best. And also uh, through the uh, hospitality towards one another and towards the new visitors. This is the budget for the Energize Harder. The higher budget uh, also due to the increase in the energy and maintenance costs. Uh, we will continue to adopt best practices to ensure clean and safe facilities. Uh, church, uh, as we ease with the easing of the safe management measures, uh, we are also preparing for uh, bigger uh, efforts uh, to reach out to the community through uh, these projects. Uh, this is the income uh, that we have budgeted. Uh, just want to thank all of you for your faithfulness, uh, especially during the two years when uh, we couldn't gather together as a church in person. Uh, your faithfulness in tithing and generosity in the offerings have allowed the church to continue in our corporate worship, witness and ministry, as well as to reach out to those in need. For the income budgeted uh, in 2022 and 2023, these are the numbers. Uh, so your, your pleasure uh, really does help us in uh, uh, planning for the new year. So, uh, yep. Uh, thank you. If anybody has any question and you want to see the full financial report of the church, you can always contact the church office. Thank you again. Thank you, Kaysan. And you want to also thank Kaysan and the finance committee also who have put in their time and their service to lead us and plan uh, for the church as well. Yeah. 
Okay, friends, if you have any other need, um, if you have a need and you would like someone to pray alongside with you also, after the service, can I invite you to come forward uh, to the side of the sanctuary and our prayer ministers will be there to pray alongside with you. Now, also, if let's say you want to find out, you're not a Christian, you want to find out a little bit more about, you know, how can you start believing in Jesus, about this, your, uh, how to put your faith in Christ, well, come forward also after the service and we will be glad to share with you some information and to pray with you also. Okay, and with that, um, can I invite the usher to come forward? Church, shall we stand as we present our gifts and the Lord's tithes with the doxology? remain standing for the closing song you continue to declare prophetically coming out
Amen, church. Go forth, therefore, to declare of God's praise, of God's work, of God's love in your lives. And just as you have received all that God has given you, His Son, His love, His grace, His provision, go forth to give of yourself to others so that they may know God's power and love and provision in their lives as well. And so may the blessings of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit be with all of you, both now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Shall we give the Lord a clap offering indeed for all of His love and grace upon us? Amen. 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 All right. Take care, everyone. God bless. See you. We'll see you next week. Remember to go down to the ministry fair and give of your blood for others. See you all. Take care. See you. We can see that. Day, the time of truth.